Welcome to Nourishing the Mother, an inspired conversation space between Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner on the journey of motherhood through the common thread of parenting, relationship and sexuality as a path to consciousness. We keep our conversations honest, our experiences real and our philosophies exploratory. We believe that in order to raise incredible humans, we first have to raise ourselves. We know that in order to rock the family, you've got to nourish the mother. If you are here, you care about paving a path of conscious and intentional motherhood, connected with yourself and your gifts, and also illuminating your children in theirs so we may raise more whole humans who can impact this world in a more humane way. If you desire to integrate your learnings practically and supportively, head on over to bridgetwood.life or julietenner.love to go deeper. And for all live streamed pre-release podcasts and all our free content, head over to our free Facebook group, Nourishing the Mother with Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner. We are Julie Tenner and Bridget Wood, and we are so grateful you're here. Hello and welcome to Nourishing the Mother. I'm Bridget Wood. And I'm Julie Tenner. And today's podcast is New Year, New You. Fuck that. (laughs) So if you're on our our wavelength, you are totally down with the fact that this time of year there can be fever pitch headlines and, you know, like Instagram stuff, social media stuff, all around how you can turn your life around and that 2023 is your year and that who you were before doesn't matter because right now you're creating. (laughs) (laughs) Just be more, be better. Reach all your goals. You're limitless. Go. Potential right now. (laughs) Claim it. So good. And what we want to say is seriously, fuck that. Like, I don't know if you are anything like Bridgie and I, but like nervous system capacity is a thing. Yeah. And patterns are a thing and that habits are a thing and that for anything to be sustainable, it's definitely not going to change on 1 January. No. And we don't want to set ourselves up to, you know, like, the, you can only fall off of the wagon when you've pitched the wagon. Yeah, yeah. When you've like, especially when it's like, you know, you've 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 basically structured this whole damn thing, and you are like on this wagon, and you are like driving this thing, and then you're ready. It's it's about to crash, right. and it, it, it crashes because of our extremely unrealistic expectations of ourselves. And sometimes I think the real lack of awareness and appreciation of ourselves. Yes. So in the, yes. the new year, yes, new yes. stuff really appeals to and plays into the the shame and guilt that exists within everybody when they perceive that they're not enough. Yes, God, yes. Right? Yes. So it, 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 is, it is expertly designed to tap that core wound that probably was formed in childhood that makes you feel like you never measure up. And so it's a perfect way to offer you a clean slate where you can just dream a new dream and be that right now. And the reality is our human foibles mean that that's really impractical and sets us up for a big crash. And we don't want that for you. No, we don't. So number one of New New Year, New You, fuck that, is the reminder that you are enough. Mm. You're enough. You're enough as you are. You're enough if you do nothing. Yeah. You're enough if you stay here. You're enough if you provide. You're enough if you receive. Mm. You are enough. There's nothing that you have to be that you're not right now. Like you are everything that you need for everything that you want. Mm. You are everything that you need for everything that you want. I just love that because usually we tend to imagine this enormous gap between what we want and everything that we are right now. Exactly. And and that that gap just seems like we can never quite close it. Yeah. Because because we're not enough, right? Right, right, right. So number one is, and look, I do think that all of these, we have four points today, all of these points will kind of actually like a waterfall 
fill the pool of the next one. Mm -hmm. But where we want to begin is just like, if I can just remember that you are enough and the entire world is conspiring and feeding on that you're not. Yeah. And Bridgie's beautiful point here before we recorded this was, and your partner's enough. Yeah. So, cause, cause sometimes often I think when we can get stuck in this new year, new year thing for ourselves, is we can also get a little bit label happy on the people around us, usually the person closest to us and, you know, project onto them where they're not enough either. And so you live in this chasm between who you want them to be and who you perceive that they are now. Yeah. Which makes for a really unfulfilling relationship. So they're enough too. Yeah. Because it means instantly our partner is fighting against us because all any of us want on a really basic human level is just to be loved for who we are as we are. Yeah. And the second we project, you have to be different in order to receive love from me. Mm. We're playing into old childhood wounds and stories. And now all of a sudden, instead of heart opening and, you know, being magnetically attracted to you, I now have to protect and preserve myself and fight against you. Mm. So yeah. it's such a beautiful reminder. I'm enough. They're enough. And what's possible from this place if I was to believe that? Mm, totally. Which is beautiful because number two, as a reminder for you, is be here now. Mm. Like be here where you're at right now, wherever you're at right now, no matter how far it feels from where you want to be, is on the way. It's mm. not in the way. So be here. The reason you're here is to pick up, you know, the gold coin to open the next level. Yeah. Yeah. I'm totally imagining like a 1980s video game. Yeah, right. But also too, like, you know, the lotus flower grows in mud. Like the yeah. mud is nourishing. Yeah. Even if it feels everything but that right now. Right. So the point I want to say here is for many of us, our nervous systems are still feeling the reverberations of 2022. Yeah. So, and 2022, I don't know for you as a listener, but what I perceive and have seen in the world through my clients is that it was a really messy year mm -hmm. because we had just had two years of, in, particularly if you're in Melbourne, intense lockdown with an activated nervous system that was just on high alert all of the time, mm -hmm. huge amounts of adrenal exhaustion, huge amounts of instability and uncertainty that really played into base level survival for many of us on a human level. So 2022, and then we had, you know, interest rates rising and all sorts of stuff that really meant 2020 was a really weird year for a lot of people, mm -hmm. full of still of this nervous system activation. And so many of us now in January of 2023 are feeling the energetic waves of that. Yeah. yeah that, We're exhausted. And in, some ways, and in some ways too, there's been like a low level addiction to that too. If we imagine that we become yeah. chemistry is that, Sometimes we get the dopamine hit from the destructiveness, right? Like the destructiveness of like reading about the next interest rate rise or reading about the next tragedy or, you know, like learning about the next random, I don't know, world event that's going to knock us for six. Is that even though it's not actually taking us closer toward our visions, there's something neurochemically that we have become looped in. Yes. And so to just notice that that's sometimes a latent effect of what we've been living through the last few years. Exactly. So this is kind of how we also came to having this podcast is because we're like, oh my God, fuck the like fucking energy rally high that we need to do new year new you like yeah. <laughs> let that shit go yeah just be here now and really know that probably your nervous system is going to need some additional time to rest mm -hmm. you're going to need more sleep more sleep more rest more water yeah like super basic and really value yourself in those basics and this can be really hard like you know you and I are both like really like we like to go get right like there's a there's a, a drive and particularly I, you know I feel like that with the new year and so I was fighting this even a couple of days ago we got back from camping and I had my I had a child free day my parents took the kids and I had like my list was enormous you know those lists where you're like no, it's cheap I do know them and I always think set yourself up for failure with those oh my god <laughs> right so anyway I just got to this point 
like a few hours in where I was like, I actually just need to sleep. And so I set my alarm for 20 minutes and I woke up two hours later. That's amazing. <laughs> but it was, a, I had to just like notice that part of me that was fighting my body on that. Mm-hmm. When actually it was, it was the first time I'd been child free, no one needing anything for me for weeks. I don't know how many weeks, months, maybe. So, so long. And I just need to listen to my body. Yeah. Can you you be work? Can you see the worthiness in just slowing down and listening to what your body needs? Yes. And I do think if you want to take it a little bit more spiritual too, is really leaning back into trusting your divine timing and the orchestration of the divine with you rather than the lean forward patriarchal, um, you know, hustle mindset or culture that I am 100% in control, I am 100% responsible and I can literally, the only thing that's in the way is me and how hard I I hustle or work. Yeah. So I really find part of that is such a beautiful spiritual practice in practicing the lean back and the trust, Mm. practicing trust that this is the perfect time for me and this is the perfect pace for me and watching that I don't then instantly attach and plug into FOMO and fear of scarcity and now I can't and now I'm never going to and <laughs> yeah which can which which can sometimes amplify when we rest right because we use that sometimes as a way to like pull that push ourselves forward but it's inauthentic because you haven't actually taken the spaciousness we need to really find the restoration in the rest yeah yeah just trusting that this is so on the way mm. the times when I have the greatest inspiration are the times when I've rested the most yeah. Like they're not separate things, right? Mm-hmm. And yet we have this idea that time is linear and that if I just keep going along and I go at this pace that I will reach this thing by this time. And, of course, it doesn't take into account at all divine timing or quantum mechanics or leaps. Or entanglement, right? Like looking right. at who you I often think, you know, I often wonder, who am I going to bump in today and what's going to become available to me? Like it's right, just exactly. Like, and when you're when you recognize divine timing and you realize there's no coincidence, it's like, oh, this is fun. Right. So I don't know if that helps you with the mindset of allowing yourself more rest and moving at the pace of your body's needs, but I find that that helps mine is remembering that this too is a spiritual practice of leaning back in trust. Yeah. And I mean that this there's an extension of that, you know, as as we you and I would do in parenting too, like when we feel like it's overwhelming or our child is pushing us or in how is our child also an orchestration of the divine that there's something here for me Mm, same as in relationship in this giant tantrum that we're Mm. that we're resisting yeah totally Mm. so on the rest and go slower is just total permission to crumble and to feel Mm -hmm. deep fatigue. And I would really like to put in here, please give yourself permission to cry and to have tears and let that be as part of your self-care regime, program, thought process, gift to yourself. Because tears are 100% a well-being self-care tool, if you like. And when they come, let them come. As right. most to stifling them, <laughs> I would like burst into tears. It was the most ridiculous time in, in hindsight. I, mean, I knew it was, but I was like, no, well, they're here because they need to be here. You know, I was trying to help my husband back the camper in and I, my brain just couldn't compute the way that it needed to be. Oh, yeah, brutal. Yeah. Like I just could not. Like it was like I just felt mute. And I just burst into tears because I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my friends say the number one guaranteed, you know, um, divorce happens with backing in a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. It's yeah. just, I just couldn't do it. And I was just like, yeah, puddle of tears. And I thought, okay, <laughs> that's my perfect, you know, release of feeling. <laughs> right. So we, yes, perfect. I'd so love that your permission, you were like, right, it's here. I'm going to go with it. No shame, no, no crushing, no crumbling, no hiding. Yeah. Love it. And also to let yourself know that if you are a single mom, you're someone who has to hold on to control. You feel like in our previous comment, you can't lean back in trust of the universe, the divine, the masculine force outside of you, your partner, whoever, 
support structures and you've got to have your shit together. Fine. But then create time like you would to have a candle lit bath, Mm -hmm. create pockets of time as self-care for tears. And you can play that song that you know makes you cry or watch that movie that you know makes you cry. So Bridget had this perfectly orchestrated, probably co-created moment where she was backing in a trailer, it instigated her tears, and then she let it come out of her body. Mm. Great. But if we don't happen upon those moments or we have control structures that we use in our day-to-day life that prevent us from being able to instigate the tears, then set yourself up to instigate them, instigate them with a movie, instigate them with a song, instigate them with a movement, instigate them with some journaling. It doesn't matter. Instigate them by the kids are in bed. It's dark. I've shut the door on the shower. The shower's on. I'm in the floor of the shower. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Set yourself up to allow yourself to flow again and to literally release all of the stress hormones of an activated nervous system out of your body rather than keeping them circling. And I would say too that in school holidays when, you know, your kids are pulling you in multiple different directions, that this is actually a really good time to, to particularly if you can't have space from them, to find ways to get that with them. So like yesterday we watched Dolphin Tale. I'd never seen it before. Cried heaps. It was so good. And it wasn't, I didn't have to escape from them. I didn't have to separate out my, like my processes from being in a parenting mode. It doesn't have to be separate either. And I think sometimes if we think it needs to be, we don't create room for it. Yeah, beautiful. This podcast is brought to you by what we have going on in the world that you can jump in on. And Bridgie, what's there for you? Yeah, so it's Reimagining Motherhood. Really, it's a space for supporting you to integrate conscious parenting alongside the whole woman that you know you are and really integrating so many of those disowned parts that we are called to remember as mothers and on our parenting journey. So you can find out more about that at bridgetwood.life. And you, Jules? You can grab my sexy Christmas date. So what you get is an easy to follow sexy and sensual couples date that comes with a 20-minute guided tantric date workshop video that you get to follow along, press play and follow along. You can gift your partner a special experience or gift each other. Comes with a downloadable PDF guide and a whole heap of sexy playlists. And you can find out more about that at julietenner.love forward slash sexy Christmas. Number three is have visions, not goals. And what I mean by this is it's really easy to set up goals that we say are incredibly like physically tangible and then we attach our self-worth to the attainment of those goals Mm -hmm. or, again, our lack of self-worth to when those physical goals don't come to fruition. So I think it's folly to have goals. I think that it's an idea to have inspiring visions. And what I mean by that is when you're setting out your year, you can have a vision of how you want it to feel. In relationship, I want to feel like this. In my life, I want to feel like this. In my motherhood day-to-day life, I want to feel like this. In work, I want to feel like this. Have visions that you can use where you could instantly put yourself in your mind's eye in a picture of living that moment. I mean, that is manifestation 101. Mm -hmm. And then you can chunk that back into, right, okay, so to feel like that, what would I need to feel like that right now? So I can match the feeling rather than the goal. Mm. And then because we attune so well to our feelings, we can then use that as a, you know, almost like a tracking thing. Like, you know, am I on the path to having that as a feeling or, you know, what am I doing that's moving away from that right now? Totally. And how could I move myself towards it? So I would love for you when you're doing new year, new you stuff to just let go of these super tangible goals that you attach. I'm worthy when I make them. I'm unworthy when I don't make them. And this kind of roller coaster of self collapse instead, this feeling state of how I wish to live my life is because I can tell you, I've met plenty of people that will have the thing that you think you want on a goal. And yet they're incredibly unfulfilled and unhappy. And I think, and and to that point, it's how am I, getting myself there because if I'm getting myself there punishing myself berating myself deciding it has to only look in this linear way then the attainment of that is not going to be fulfilling because it actually hasn't been an authentic path for you it's been you've shoehorned yourself into some kind of process that's not you totally 
Totally. So really sink into visions, not goals, and don't attach your self-worth to the attainment of goals. Mm -hmm. And number four, our last one is it's okay to change. Mm, Yeah. And sometimes we can feel a little bit wobbly like the grounds moving underneath us when we recognize oh gosh like the identity that I clung on to last year or you know five years ago is not who I am today this this is also part of that giving yourself permission and time to let that dust settle to let that new question sit with you for a while you know, who am I becoming mm. who can, what can I give myself permission to be or do mm. Mm -hmm. It's different perhaps who I've defined myself as in the past. And that can feel really uncomfortable, can't it? Like if you've built a life and identity, you've probably been a bit self-righteous around the way you see this particular thing, the way Mm -hmm. children should be raised, the way women should birth, the way, I don't know, um, we should educate, the way we should meet our children's needs. Like you pick any of the ones that you and I have both been on a journey with too. Right. And we have lived a life and said to the world, this is what's important to it. And then you go, well, shit, all of a sudden my consciousness, consciousness has grown, changed, shifted. I don't kind of don't see things the way that I did or gee, my lived experience of this is different to what I thought it would be and I'm not enjoying it so much Mm -hmm. and so it can be really painful to then feel like you've got to eat your words or swallow your words, can't it? It can. This sense of like the identity has changed and I'm trying to wrestle with is it okay for that to happen and am I okay in the world with those I love when I change what I've previously identified with. So I just think it's worth just leaving room for it's okay to change. The other thing that I would say to this is we can have all of the visions and goals and how we want our year to go that we like. But 100% of the time, what is 100% guaranteed is that at some point this year, you will have a shit show or a life derailment that you could not possibly have predicted or planned for. All of us will. And I want you to know that the lived human experience of that derailment is the same for all of us because we have the same spectrum of emotions. It doesn't matter that this created that for Bridget and this created that derailment for me. Forget the thing that caused it. Mm. What you can anticipate for certainty is that at some point in your year, you are going to have the derailment where you're going, who am I? What am I doing? This isn't working. Life is fucked. I can't, I can't even get my head above the water here. That is 100% going to happen this year. So what we want to do is really allow space for change, have visions, but also know at some point this shit is going to go the opposite direction probably. Mm. And how do I allow myself to move with that change in a way that still feels in alignment and authenticity? How do I set myself up to have the support structures to pivot with the changes in my seasons and capacities based on this. Mm -hmm. So just allowing it to change because parenting when you're thriving looks completely different to parenting when you are surviving. Yeah, absolutely. And it requires a whole different, you know, set of expectations from yourself and from your family. Right. So I'm just saying in this allowing bubble of allow change is to also anticipate it. I don't want you to throw your hands up in the air when, when you get the derailment and you're like, life's fucked. I can't reach my dreams. I can't do the things I wanted to do. That's not true. I don't want you to stop. This is just an invitation into creating a more fulfilling and sustainable life. Yeah. What is it that needs to change here? Mm-hmm. So just anticipate it, allow yourself to shift and change. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to go through new year, new year, fuck that shit. Let's be where we are and love ourselves so thoroughly in it so we're no longer running imposter syndrome or the belief that we have to be someone or something other than we are. Number one, you are enough and they are enough. Mm-hmm. Number two, be here. It's on the way to what you want. It's okay to crumble. Rest let yourself have tears. Number three, have visions, not goals. Don't attach your self-worth to a goal. And number four, it's okay to allow for change within you and your life and your goals. Mm, Beautiful. And what's happening in your world, Jules? 
you can jump into Sanctum, which is my online course and live women's circle course. It's where we create and hold safe, sacred and sage-like space in teaching you how to run women's circles, rituals and ceremonies so you can live a deeply fulfilling life and business. You can find out more at julietenner.love. And you, Bridget? Yes, it's all things reimagining motherhood. So it's really about how to inspire and support you on your motherhood journey. You can find out more at bridgetward.life. Remember to nourish the woman to rock the family. And we'll see you next week when we continue to peel back the layers on your mothering journey. Thank you so much for listening. We literally couldn't do this without you. Please share this podcast with anyone you think it would be medicine for. If you desire to integrate your learnings practically and supportively into your life, then head on over to bridgetwood.life or julietenner.love to go deeper. And if you feel like giving back a little to this free content, please rate us on iTunes or Facebook, all of which helps the podcast reach more mamas who need this type of tonic for the soul.